Ooh, that sounds good. Adding a breeze to your photo session is a really easy way to create portraits with dynamic movement, and there's lots of ways you can do it. I'm going to look at three different ways with three different looks in this video. But it doesn't matter how you create a breeze, there's one thing in my experience that holds true. I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And if you're going to use Breeze in your photo session, be prepared to take a lot of failed photos. That's exactly how it works with a Breezy session. You will get one good shot for lots of bad shots. That's absolutely fine. So with that in mind, I'm going to get a light set. Let's get a model in, a rather brave model, and let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe is going to be the model for this shoot, and I'm going to start with perhaps the most basic and simple, and yet somehow the most controllable generator of a breeze that we have, which is this piece of foam core. It doesn't have to be foam core, it could be a piece of cardboard, it could be your spare reflector, anything that you can just give a little bit of a waft and create a breeze. Now, before I actually do that, I've set up my lighting in a fairly straightforward way. I've got a key light to the side, a backlight on my background, and this is gonna give us, well, let's show you. Let's show you what it will look like. Here we go, Chloe, quick test shot. Nice lighting on Chloe, nice lighting on the background, and it's a nice photo, but it's gonna be a lot more exciting when we add a breeze. The art of using a wafting board is to start low and then come up to the top. That puts an updraft and lifts your model's hair and gives some movement to the shot. However, trying to do this on your own and pressing the shutter is a little bit challenging, so it does help to have an assistant. And I've got the awesome Sam, who's going to be in charge of creating a breeze. She's going to stand to the side of my camera. Okay, Chloe, are you ready? ready. Sam, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, go for it. And it really is, as soon as you see the shot, press the shutter. You get one shot her waft of air, but it is really controllable and looks amazing. And that's all there is to it. It's no more complicated than that. So, uh, well, let's try a few shots like this. Are you two ready? Okay, here we go. Ready. Of course, you don't have to stick to having the breeze coming in from the front. You can move around and create different looks from different angles. And one of my favorite is to have the breeze coming in from behind. I'm going to be shooting this at f8, but I'm actually going to meter this out at f9 because Chloe is covered in fabric and I need to take that into account during my exposure. As you can see, things have changed a bit for our second fan. This is your classic desk fan, and this is what we're going to use to create a bit of movement, but this time not of Chloe's hair, but of some fabric. Now, this is really lightweight organza fabric. Uh, back here, I've got my Flashpoint Explore 300. I've got a fill light the other side. It's the 200. Not a complicated lighting setup. The hard work is actually going to happen with Chloe, unfortunately, who has to get her face very close to this fan. The fabric should help a little bit. Let's just take a test shot before we turn the fan on, just to make sure everything is working okay. This is a profile side-on shot. And as you can see, it looks really nice. The fabric looks really good. There's nice lighting here. Okay, that's really all there is to this, other than turning the fan on. Now, for this to work, you need to be a little bit careful because this is a strong fan, very close to your model. Chloe, if at any point you want to stop, just press the stop button. Okay, that's absolutely <laughs> fine. Do you want to turn the, do you, yeah, go for it. You turn it on. It's your responsibility. Here we go. <laughs> right, so let's just take some shots like this and just do a couple of test shots and see what we get. One last one. Okay, we'll stop there. A good idea to take a couple of test shots and then review. It's a powerful fan. I want to make sure it looks good before we get too far into it and give Chloe a chance to see exactly what the shots are going to look like. 
So I like this, this looks really nice. The fabric is sticking to Chloe's face a little bit because of the breeze. I think with a little bit of help, I can probably pull the fabric out the back slightly and create a bit more drama. Let's try that. Okay, Chloe, go for it. So I'm gonna give Chloe a bit of a hand. I'm gonna move the back fabric, here we go. That's nice, yeah. And this really helps being tethered in because I can actually see exactly what's going on. Okay, stop there. <laughs> yeah, love that, that's really good. Now you might notice the shadow in the top left corner of this shot. I don't mind it because, well, these shots have a degree of randomness to them and there will be some cropping involved. The temptation with this sort of photography is just to stop and review each and every image, but try and avoid that. If you take a sequence of images and review them, it'll not only give you a better flow to the session, but it'll also give a natural break for your model so they don't stay too long in the breeze. And of course you can take this idea and get a different look by choosing a different fabric, or in this case, a different color of the same organza fabric. The third way I'm gonna create a breeze in my studio is with this, which is a mini leaf blower. It's a very powerful and very directional blower. Now with great power comes a great big battery, but also responsibility. And you have gotta be a little careful with this because I don't use it outside of the studio. I don't want it kicking up any dirt into my model's eyes. And if I am gonna use it in front of my model, I'll only use it on its lowest power. But for great hair movement, Try blowing from behind your model. This can work really well, and this is a lot more fun as well because we can go full power. Are you ready, Chloe? Yeah. Which, as you can see, is both dramatic and quite noisy. Now, I can't do this on my own again. I really do need an assistant for this, so I'm gonna hand this over to Sam, and we're gonna take a few shots like this. Lighting for this setup, really simple. One key light above my model up here, just shining straight down on top of her. Let's take a test shot and see what we get. So that works really well, I like that. Okay, and that's really it. There isn't much more to it than this. What I'm gonna do is ask Sam to try and blow Chloe's hair so it blows down the side, leaving her face clear of hair and hair coming out along the edge here. There isn't an easy way to do this, so it will take a bit of trial and error, probably more error than trial. Uh, are you two ready? Yeah. Okay, let's take a few shots like this. Here we go. I guess once the battery has run out, your shoot is officially over, which was fine because I've got a load of great pictures, but some of them like this one, the hair is good, but it's not as full and flowing as I wanted. So I'm actually gonna combine multiple bits of hair together. And that's one of the big advantages of doing this sort of work with a blown hair shot. It's really simple. So I've got the two types of hair, there we go, on separate layers. I'm gonna put a layer mask, reveal all, and all I need to do is, well, I've got a white layer mask, I need a black paintbrush, and I can just paint the hair in from one layer, and it'll combine seamlessly with the hair from the other layer. Now it does this because blown hair has a random nature to it. It isn't an exact sort of straight line. It's, it looks a mess, so it's easy to do. Now, if it goes wrong, it's not a problem. Just switch to the opposite color, which is white, and then you can paint it back in again. That's one of the advantages of using layer masks. There you go, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is to do a bit of cloning and healing. So let's make a new layer, layer, new layer. I'll call this one heal. And then I'm gonna get the healing brush and just sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key and then paint in over here because of course we don't really want leaf blower in the picture. In my mind, I was gonna apply some texture to this picture, which is why Chloe is against a blank white wall, because that works very well for new textures. 
This is the texture. This is actually the wall from my old small home studio. So I took some photos of it before we moved. Let's close that down and we'll paste it in because I love the texture. It fits perfectly because these were taken with the same camera. And then I can choose, well, blending modes for layers. Lots of options with the blending modes and lots of different effects. There are no rights, there are no wrongs. You can use whatever you like. I think that soft light looks absolutely perfect. So that's what I'm going to use. I will just put another layer mask reveal all with a paintbrush and just paint away the texture from Chloe's skin because I don't really need it there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then finally, optional extra, down at the bottom of the layers palette is the black and white circle, which is the adjustment layers. And I'm gonna apply a color lookup. Now this is gonna add some toning to the image. Again, lots of options, lots of different interesting effects. Some are brilliant, some are just a little on the weird side. I'm actually going to choose futuristic bleak because that sums up exactly the feeling that I had in my head when I was setting this picture up. And there you go, with a few extra tweaks and changes, there is my final picture, complete with blowing hair. My last tip applies to any sort of breeze in the studio. If you're going to include it as part of a photo session, then make it the last thing that you do because it tends to make a bit of a mess of your model's hair. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.